Hey, what's up? It's Swamp. Back for another tutorial. And this one I'm going to do, uh, redo the flapping wings one. It's a multi-joint animation kind of thing. So, let's just get started. Okay, so the first thing we need is a body. So he's going to be the body of the bird. And this can be a big bird. Alright, next we need wings. So I'm going to use medium track piece. Okay, so first let's set up the wings. So what we need to do is set up a dummy object, and then we need to change the pivot point. So first let's set up this dummy object. Put this right here on the edge of the track piece. Try to get as close as you can. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to glue these together. I'm going to change the pivot type to manual, and I'm going to select the pivot, and I'm going to move it down to this other end and do the same thing. Put it right there. Okay, now we're going to take four copies of this track piece. So let's just flip this around, put the pivot point on the end towards the bird. That pivot point over there. Same thing over here. Switch it around. And another piece over here. Let's lift these up a little bit, get these out of the way. This is going to be the tips of the wings. I'm going to show you how to attach those to the wings and have them uh, flap also. It gives it like a more dimensions to the wings. Okay, so now first thing we need to do is we need to power everything. So let's grab an interval trigger. That's going to run everything. Then, um, wow, this is kind of hard to do. Uh, get out of get out of sorts here. Okay, so we need to set up a couple more dummy objects. Two more on the bird. You could use one, but I like using two because it looks a little more real. Okay, now center these two objects. Now before we get any further, we might as well start getting the positions of all these objects. So what we need to do is we need to grab a vector object info for each dummy object. So we need one here, one here. Let's put these back. Back here. Then we need one for this wingtip. We need one for this wingtip. All right, so now just select all the dummy objects so we can get their positions. So sometimes you need to select the dummy objects before you do things. Hopefully this won't be the case here. It'll let me select this without there. Okay. You gotta make sure you don't select the glued object and just select the dummy object. Because we're gonna need that position to line the other pieces up to. Okay, so now we're gonna glue these three pieces together. select the body and then move the dummy objects down. Let me see if we could put these a little closer together. So I just put them close together, select both of them and then center them and then bring them down into the body a little bit. Okay so now to move the body we are going to use curved data source. We're going to use curved data source for everything but right now we're just going to go slow. Do one thing at a time. Okay Next we need an object position event. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go local movement. We're going to move the X position to the linear or the curved data source. We're going to turn off rotation on this one and the event target is going to be the body. Now the interval trigger, going to set it to be every tick and it's going to go to that object position event. Now I'm going to make this last a lot longer because it goes really fast. So let's give it about 2,500 maybe. 2,000. Let's try 2,000. Okay. So that's good enough. It's not too fast. We can go a little faster. The faster you go, the more you're going to have to offset the dummy objects. And I'll show you that in a little bit. You'll see what happens. Um, it's some sort of a redraw thing. I've talked to some people about it and... I kind of have an idea how to fix it, but it's really complex, so I'm not going to do it right now. So, but anyway, 
Okay, so next what we want to do is attach the wings. So we need an object position event for each wing piece. So we use this one, this one here. Okay, so what we'll do first is we're going to set it up to not be local, and the position of this wing is going to be these three positions here. Just pick value object, pick all three of those. The rotation is going to be local. Now what we need is a curved, curved uh, data source for the rotation of the wings. So grab one here, put one here. We're going to need to double these actually for the other pieces of wings, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy them over here too. There we go. Okay, so now this curve, this object position event is going to be for this wing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the, we're going to bank it also because we want it to flat. So we're going to go to there. Now the linear we're going to set to ease, quadratic ease in out. I'm going to go minus 30 with this one and positive 30 with this. So let's just test that. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to come from, we need to power that everything. So we need to come from that object position event to this object position event with the trigger. Okay, so now you see it aligns it to the body. We need to set this to loop and invert second half so it keeps on flapping. Alright, so there you go. Wings flapping and it's aligned to the body. So, we need to redo that or just continue to do that with all these other ones. So this, I'm actually going to copy this over here because there were so many settings. Delete that one. Delete that one. And delete this one. Okay, so these are the same settings all the way around. We'll change these edges because they need to flap a little harder for you to see them. But for now, we'll go with that. Okay, so now this object position event, not local. Position is going to be these world positions. Then for rotation, we're going to go with bank. We're going to go with that curved data source. We need to select it to move the wing. So its event target is going to be this wing. Then we need to power it. Let's continue the interval trigger through all these. Go to this next one. All right, now I should flap the wings like that. That's how you make flapping wings to one point. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take it to the next level. So we're going to take these positions and do the same thing with these wings. So we take, once again, this, but we're going to adjust these to be a f further flap harder. So these are going to go to 60. Okay, now this object position event is going to position here with this dummy object. And then its bank is still going to be curved data source. We did come from this one let's just go straight across to this so same thing with this one this object position event is going to power that wing its bank is going to go to this curved data source and then its global positions are going to be these three positions here now we're going to go from powering this one Let's go straight to this object position event to continue the interval going and then continue once again all the way over to this one. Now, okay. I always forget something. All right, so this one needs to go here. All right. This one's still not working. Oh, see that's what happens when you forget to click the local button. Okay, there we go. 
I see they're flapping somewhat. This one's not flapping very well. Oh, yep. See, this needs to be 60. It gives it a further flap. You could go further with it if you wanted to. There we go. Now see, it gets a, a nice flap going. Now see, the one problem with this is you see these wing tips are not lining up on the edges. They're not exactly aligned with the dummy object that they should be aligned with. And, you know, you can offset those. You can make the wings a little larger and offset that kind of thing so it's not such a skinny wing not lining up. But I have tried to figure out how to fix that. I tried on offset ticks and things like that and that it just doesn't work. I think it's got to do something with the way it renders and moves and stuff. It renders after it moves and I don't know, redraw or something. So anyway, that's how I do it. You can, you know, like I said, you can um, make the wings a little larger and, and have the dummy object a little deeper in so you don't see them disconnecting in that flap. But you know it works pretty good with with other movements like if the body was going faster you need to actually bring those dummy objects a little forward so the lag would match up Here, see I'll show you let's take this to like 475 or something well, it's not that bad we see those tips are a little bit behind they're just not quite matching up perfectly but it's pretty good so anyway that's how you do it so far I'm gonna to try to figure out a fix for it I talked to some other people about it too so if somebody figures out a fix I'll either point you to it or show you how to do it but otherwise this is how you do it I uh, hope you had a good time and thanks for watching